In this proof, we're looking at the diffraction grating formula. Uh, the letters stand for N is the order of the image, which is basically um, which dot appears on the sheet of paper beyond the one that has gone straight through. So the first pair of dots to the left and right, the second pair of dots that appear on your screen and so on. Lambda is the wavelength of the light. D is the grating constant, which is 1 divided by the number of lines per millimetre. It's basically measuring the distance between one gap uh, on a diffraction grating to the other, okay, which is usually a very, very short distance. And the last thing we have is the sine of the angle between the order that we're looking at and the zero order image that went straight through. The picture that you can see is just a very uh, simple setup of what we would get if we passed red laser light through a diffraction grating and the pattern that would emerge on a sheet of paper. The beam of light that travels straight through the diffraction grating is called the zero order image. The two dots that we get to the left and to the right of that are both the first order images. So that would just merely continue on that we would get another pair of red dots appearing to the left and another one to the right hand side and they would both be the second order images and um, they're just not labeled in on that diagram and it will continue on uh, to the left and right we get the third order images fourth order and so on if we look then at a kind of a top-down view of what we're seeing in the picture we get this. The incident light ray is coming from our uh, laser. Uh, it hits the diffraction grating and as you can see we still get the zero order images, the one that travels straight through the diffraction grating and hits our screen. The two that appear to the left and then to the right of that are both the first order images and then if we continue on to the left and to the right we'll end up with our two second order images and it will keep going the third order and fourth order and so on. So what we need to try and do is to try and make some sense of this so we're going to keep concentrating on what's going on but the real point of interest for us is what's happening at the slits that are uh, in the diffraction grating and what, how the laser beam is interacting with those slits at the point of contact. If we zoom in we're going to consider first of all the two first order images to see what's happening and then we're going to consider the two second order images and see how though, uh, those two are working. Going to the first order images what we've got here is a very basic diagram. The black dashed line on the left hand side is our diffraction grating the red lines with the arrows are meant to be representing the laser beams. If we draw a line from one slit, or from each slit, going uh, perpendicular to the ray of light that's uh, closest to it, we're essentially getting a small uh, triangle. And the reason why we're getting the first order image is that the difference from one of those to the next is just one wavelength of a difference. So what we have to imagine is that if we look at the first one we have one full wavelength in that distance and then it just continues on down through that ray of light. If we go for the next one there's another ray that's fitting into that distance and then that will just also continue down. The next one is a full wavelength that we've got there in that distance and it just continues on down the laser beam. If we look at what we've got in the triangle we can label an angle here which is going to be called theta and if we look at the distance uh, that those green waves are making we're basically going to be getting uh, a one lambda difference from one slit to the next when we apply the sine is opposite over hypotenuse the hypotenuse in this case is just going to be the grating constant, which is the distance from one slit to the next. The opposite side is going to be the lambda, the one lambda of a difference. So when we write down our formula, the sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. 
The opposite in this case is 1 lambda of a difference, so it's 1 wavelength, over the hypotenuse, which in this case is the letter D, okay, which is our grating constant. If we look then next at the second order image, similar picture, we have rays of light coming from our diffraction grating, which are our laser beams, but this time it's the second order image. When we apply the wavelengths to this, what we're going to be able to do is we're actually not going to be just fitting one wavelength inside of this, we're actually going to be able to fit in two wavelengths of a difference. And they continue on down that wave, or down that ray of light. The next one, we're going to be able to fit in two wavelengths again, just about, and that continues on down that ray of light. So what we now have is that this distance that we're fitting in here is equal to two lambdas. Same thing here, the distance from there to there is another two times lambda. So if we apply our uh, sine as opposite over hypotenuse rule to this one, we still have the grating constant out here to the left hand side, so the distance between one slit to the next. If we apply our formula now, so we've got sine of the angle, which I forgot to label, is down here again. So we've got the sine of the angle is opposite. The opposite this time is going to be 2 times lambda divided by the opposite, which is the grating constant of D. And if we look at those two formulas, the only difference between them is the number that is in front of the lambda value. So what we see is that the number 1 in front of the lambda value matches up with the first order image. In our second order image, we have the number 2 linking in with the second order. So what we can do is if we want to get the nth order, we can basically substitute in the letter n into our formula. So we would have sine of the angle, so sine theta, is going to be the nth order image. It could be the fifth, it could be the seventh, it could be the twelfth, if you were able to get that far. Multiplied by lambda, divided by the grating constant. And as we've done in other proofs, we have uh, essentially two fractions either side of an equal sign. The sine of theta can be put over the number 1. We then cross multiply. So 1 gets multiplied by n lambda and d gets multiplied by sine theta. So 1 by n lambda is just n lambda. d is multiplied by sine of theta. And that's our proof finished. For exam purposes, you would need to draw the diagrams that I've had on the previous two slides here, um, as best you can, and then showing that for the nth order image, you're substituting in You're substituting in the letter N instead of the number 1 and the number 2. And that's it done.